Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is March 22nd. I could not see the screen for a second. It is March 22nd, 2017. This is the SB Trade Desk Midweek Strategy Webinar. And let me know uh, before I get started here that you can hear and see. All good, says Pete. All right, great. I'm not sure how much I've got to go over today because I wrote or I mean, new information because, uh, you know, I, I wrote so much last night, uh, various markets. But we find ourselves obviously at a, a really interesting junk, juncture, especially as it pertains to um, yen, you know, gold. Uh, the Nikkei in particular, which I'll, I'll get I'll get through, but I want to spend some time first on uh, Euro. So the first order of business in catching you know a big move, right, is identifying the direction of the move. Sounds pretty obvious. Um, you can do that by moving averages or patterns or whatever, right? But we find that trend line and median line analysis does a pretty good job because it also gives you pretty precise points on where to um, look for responses, reactions within that move. And in this case, you can see that it's still early here, right? But in this case, you can see that we've got so far this uptrending channel. And this might be something that we were following for quite a long time. And I'm going to go. Back, I'm going to go to an example here in a little bit, um, where it'll really, you know, show what I'm what I'm talking about. So the median line of this channel, all right, uh, does cut through some good levels, and we consolidated around it for you know one, two, three. Uh, days before yesterday's move higher, which really is a characteristic that you see a lot around median lines, right, and mid channels and stuff like that. And it's not um, uncommon either for you to come back and then test that level as support, which would be, again, as I mentioned yesterday, about 107.55. Okay, um, so, you know, the best to, if you're, the best scenario for a big move would be, and for us to get a really like add, to add to the trade, the best scenario would be to see Euro, even if it came up into 108.50 or something, right? Even if it came up into 108.50, would actually be for this to consolidate for a couple more days, you know, build some more energy along the median line, finding support, which you can buy on with stops under here, and then accelerates the upside up into 109.80, which to me is probably the first major test of uh, of, the of, the, of of any strength, you know, from uh, from this low down here, because you'd have two equal legs at that point in the up channel. So what I want to get to is, and obviously, you know, we're not. This is don't expect the inverse of rally down into you know 10. 104 um, from 140. I'm not saying that we're going to one that, you know, back to 140 or anything that, okay, not at all. In fact, if you saw the long-term page update over the, um, over the weekend, what I actually think happens, and this is long-term, so you really don't need to concern yourself with any sort of near-term trading stuff here. But what I actually think is happening, I think that the decline here is probably a three and that we're in an impulse higher probably for much of this year, and that we are heading back to 117, maybe even, um, what's this low over here, 118.60. Um, and then you might actually get a collapse, a full-on collapse, right? So you would get something like this. We would see something like this. Okay, and then the euro can go to can go to eighty cents by 
you know, in, in two years, three years, something like that. So that's obviously nothing to concern us also with at the moment. Uh, I think we're headed a thousand pips higher. Obviously there will be pullbacks, hiccups, all that good stuff. If this continues to follow the analog here with the timing of the turns, right? The timing of the turns, we could be coming into a near term top at some point in mid April, right? So still looking higher. Anyway, I'm going off track here with what I wanted to talk about, which is fairly common. So identifying the channel, right? Well, Back in 2014 when we topped, you know, there was very little pullback, right? I mean, the biggest pullback was this on the way down. And what you're able to do at that point was draw yourself. This is just a trend line channel, right? Median line, trend line channel. Okay, so what happened at that point can see what the median line was at that point, right? It was support. And we actually broke, we consolidated on it for two days, broke below it, actually had a gap on it, came back and it was resistance. We consolidated for several days under it, resistance, and then things really fell apart. So it's almost like I'm kind of looking for the opposite situation on this, right? Not to this degree, of course, because that would imply that Euro is going to go to one, you know, out like 2,000 pips higher. I don't really think that's the case. I think we go for higher, but not to that degree. Um, so that's what happened here. By the way, if you actually made this a regular fork, it actually came into play all the way back down here in May of 2015. Pretty pretty wild. So there we have an example. I, I you know I'll be at the opposite example. So uh, pretty cut and dry here, folks, looking at essentially still bullish, you know, understanding that you could get trailed out. But the upside potential still, in my opinion, uh, warrants keeping the position on and even being prepared mentally to add to the trade if you get a pullback and hold on 107.55. Right. And that's important uh, how I said that, I think being prepared mentally to add to the trade, right? Understanding what you may or uh, may want to do um, given a certain set of conditions. So have this marked down. I don't have the full fork on here because it's just cleaner without it sometimes. And that's what I want, right? So blue line looking to buy it. Still think we had to 180. So that's the deal with euro um you know i'm kind of expecting a pause in you know the the euro rally in the um in the you know the general dollar decline right because this was our major line here we have broken it so i am looking down towards the uh, election low so the major risk is lower but it's kind of the same thing consolidate a bit around here and again we have we also have the trend line this is the US dollar index we also have the trend line from May and September right so a bit of consolidation around here would not be uh, any sort of a surprise uh, and in the dollar and a lot of this obviously a lot of yesterday's move was yen um, if not most of it I mean euro too but a lot of it was yen so even dollar yen getting a bounce, which I think it, it gets a bounce, it's already bouncing, but we should probably go sideways for a couple days here. So general dollar thing, maybe on hold, uh, you know, headlines like this, which were in last night's report, throwing in the towel, right? Typical before you get something, uh, some sort of a bounce. All right, let's move on to cable real quickly. 
Pete saying, can you show that Euro so I can t take a pick? Yeah, man. You got it. Do you want do you want me to show the um, – were you talking about the one from back in 2014, like the one from, from before or the, or the current one, like this one, this one right here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take a picture. And you know, you can always, you guys can always save the charts that you've got, um, like in the, in the reports, right? So, sorry, logging in. Um, you know, so when we look at this, like the swing update from last night, any picture, any picture, you can just click on it, right? You can click on it, right click save image as and you can just save it you can you can have it you know so you could save it you know if you want to keep certain images on file or print them out even um i actually think that's a underutilized or a lot of people don't use a lot of old timers use it uh because they're used to that printing stuff out, but there's something about having a chart printed out and being able to look at it um, without the market moving and stuff. And it's just, I don't know, sometimes it helps me at least. All right. So what about cable? Uh, cable, let's go to cable. The list of things on cable that uh, are so cool and, and awesome and bullish, right? So this here was the channel. All right, we're going to go way back to 2000, and oh, this is a four hour chart to 2007. And you can see what's been going on here. Yesterday's move was important. Of course, today's low is 124.22, and my entry was 124.20. Um, still think you could consolidate a bit on this level, on this, uh, around this area, right? Um, if I, let me bring in a different, different package. On here, the 55 day average, really ever since we kind of started this process of, I'm thinking bottoming, right? But ever since we started this process, the 55 day average has been really big. Um, and all right, here's the 55 day average, right? Resistance, resistance. Once you go through bullish support breakdown, went through it. So, you know, it long into any sort of support on dips, uh, two levels, 124, uh, 20, basically this line, this top side of this uh, trend line should be good, you know, for a run. I'm thinking, look, I said 25.25 is a level for uh, maybe some resistance. That's the high day close or daily reversal resistance, as we like to call it, right? But bigger levels are, are higher. And there's notably basically the, the highs up here at 127, right? 127.05, uh, 127.21, that's a square root level, okay? And you have the 200-day average up there, which, by the way, has not been hit since Brexit, okay? It's a pretty long time. So to me, this is really the next attraction point for cable is up above 127-ish. Um, and then if I go back to the beautiful picture that we have here, you can see that's where the par the next big parallel comes in, is right up there too. That's essentially the median line of this entire drop. Okay, if I, you, if I draw it like so, right, it's, it's, it's the median line basically of that whole thing. So this you could even make red because we would, that would be the resistance line if you're going to get some resistance on the way up. Um, you know, how many things can I check off that are really, really bullish about cable? Well, 55-day average did that. Okay. 
don't forget about the analog, right? And those special reports from earlier in the year are still valid, right? I keep, I'll keep these special report links to any sort of special report that I write up here when I think it's still valid, like it still could be useful, right? Even the dollar yen thing, um, I still think can be useful because I can see us rallying from here and actually rallying maybe into early the early April period before seasonals turn down again. But we have the special reports basically calling for British pound um, major bottoming process, but we refined it with some of the short term stuff, right? Like 211, we were looking for it to come in before bottoming it did. Um, but yeah, cable going up to 127. The COT, right? We, the COT, British pound futures. If you're not totally familiar with this, there's not a, it's not uh, it's not complicated. The blue line would be what you call commercial hedgers, which in financial futures is not it's clear, right? Because a, a, a hedger is going to be a producer. So like in agricultural commodities, um, it's pretty clear who's who produces, right? Farmers, okay. Uh, producers and then the you know if you're short the commodity you one you're, you're a hedger so if you're you know a speculator that's who the red line is it's pretty clear those are hedge funds these are large speculators the black line is small speculators but the bottom line here what happened is we've never seen a position this skewed in ever in the history of british pounds um, record spec shorts record commercial longs right previous records like down here in 2010, okay, uh, here in 2013, uh, before some of the biggest rallies we've seen. So don't worry that if you haven't, you know, gotten, if you're not triggered or you're not long pound yet, I think there'll be plenty of opportunity to get long um, pounds in the coming uh, days, weeks, what have you. It's hoping that we do get it a this comes in a little bit and you get you end up getting 2420 that would be ideal right but the other level i wanted to alert you to is 2368 and 2368 is a high volume level okay here it is so this is the high volume level you see the red line that is from what 31516 at 8 a.m. what was that day 316 that was last thursday i think so I'm not sure exactly what that is, um, what that volume level is from, but that is a high volume level. And that would be kind of your last big important support um, on, you know, near term. And if we go to an hourly chart here, you can kind of see it, I think, the obvious level. Yeah, a lot of times with the, the obvious big candle is going to be your volume level. But you can draw that in, maybe if you you know if you want, put it right there. Oh yeah, Puja, 16 March was BOE. Thank you. This trend line on a really short term chart might be a little too steep. Whatever. Anyway, so 2420 like that, 2369 would be a final kind of level to pay attention to. Okay, let's get into dollar yen, Nikkei, um, and such. Okay, so the Nikkei, as I said this morning, I think this might be the most important chart um, right now and pretty clear why. So this is the trend line from Brexit, actually, um, the June 24th low of last year. And it does, you know, touch one, so here, and then it touches on the, uh, the 30th. And then you had support here on the election. Obviously, this would be the initial reaction on the election that kind of threw so many people off, uh, myself included. 
And that was the initial reaction. Obviously, we've gone a lot higher. So we're back at this trend line. And um, even if there is a bigger breakdown on the horizon, I would think that you get a good bounce here. As also noted this morning, you do have how many days down in a row now for the Nikkei? I think it's seven. So Nikkei futures, seven days down, that does not happen a lot. We had nine into the February low of last year, which obviously was the low. Um, pure panic at that point, of course, after the failed NERP. Remember the negative interest rate policy that was put in place. Um, and going back before then, the last time that you even had seven was, I don't know, when was it? Got to go all the way back to the financial crisis. So we had nine in January of 09. The financial crisis, like the pinnacle of it in October, was eight. So this is not a common thing. And then dollar yen itself, we are on seven. And it's happened several times again. Uh, did happen this year. That was into the low on January 17th. And that whole thing was retraced. In fact, from that point, we rallied, what, 112.50 to 115.60. We rallied 400 and something points in two days. Um, last year, it happened before Brexit, which was a good low, 103.60 to 106.80 in, what, three, day, three four days. Uh, this was a good low in April, seven days down, rallied high, you know, for 107.60, you know, over 400 points in about a week or two weeks, sorry. And before that, you got to go back to this low, September 2012, right before things went on a tear on the upside. And before that, it's essentially the all time low in dollar yen. Right. So you can see that seven days down, it would seem to be kind of a random thing. Right. But it actually has pinpointed pretty decent um, lows in dollar yen going back a good a good uh, a good many years. Okay, so we have that going for us. My favorite thing with dollar yen right here is simply the um Yes, 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 Gary, you're right. Well, exactly. You know, all we can do is go on the past uh information that we have and the tendencies, right? Um there is no we don't have any future uh, prices to work with. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Okay, so my favorite thing about this dollar yen setup, so how many times do we talk about or we look at the, uh, you know, the, just the, the classic, we call it the, just, you know, the channel, and then the breakout and then the retest. Basically what you have here, hold on. So here's the channel. Okay. Channel, channel. Breakout retest so we have retested channel uh my entry was 110.70 could still hit it because sometimes um well not sometimes right seems like a lot of times the initial stab maybe won't be the low maybe we need to kind of run it a few times um but yeah i'm looking higher in dollar yen and UK. I mean, if you don't, if it doesn't turn up here, 
got some serious problems in the market in general. And again, we can draw it, we can draw in a good bearish fork here. Right? I, I, I use the fork and then I kind of you can pick and choose the, the important the important lines on it on the chart. So clearly I'd put uh, I'm not sure how important the median line is, but you've got that. I would put this on there. That was the line I was looking to buy on as well. And then you could put the median line on there. Right? Although you'd rather have levels that you trade on. So like this to me would be more important than the median line. So that would be a level for resistance, which essentially lines up with these lows at 112.50. I'd be targeting 112.30. Okay. So yeah, I'm looking higher in dollar yen. Um, you know, hopefully it uh, it complies. It's a good looking setup. Another thing that I was hoping to get this morning would be a high volume reversal, uh, maybe on dollar yen or something. We didn't have that. You can see that we had good volume here, right? A volume spike this morning, but it wasn't anything um, I'd consider extreme, right? Like this is FOMC volume. That was a big move. That was the biggest of the year, in fact, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Um, so we didn't get anything like that, but we did get a volume spike. And obviously when we're looking at the Nikkei, we're looking at uh, the S&P, we're looking at, um, at gold here uh, as well. And the gold chart I put this chart in there last night. But just straight line moves, huh? Straight down, straight up. But would think that you end up with some sort of a pause in this move because it's five waves higher. Uh, it's just been grinding into a top here so far. This obviously a pullback in gold would fit pretty well with a pullback in the in the you know or a bounce I should say in the dollar um, in this environment. You do have this fork which we're still riding, so maybe you know this would be something to follow because if the if the pull if you do get a pullback here, maybe it's not as deep as you think. You could still ride on the, ride this fork. Okay, kind of needed for it to happen. Kind of like now though, uh, 1253 is daily reversal resistance. Really, the last level to even think about as far as gold's concerned. Okay, let's move over to Aussie. So Aussie dollar, very big picture, as you know, I am pretty bullish on it and near term was kind of concerned right because of the uh sarab asking about silver copper and oil you got it i'll definitely go through it remember we had this this was the i put this up last week we had the aussie and china uh thing, which was the 52-week high in China, but not in Aussie, and um, it was a good, it was pretty good timing, we, uh, you know, with things getting whacked yesterday, but again, Aussie's still holding up really well, and I'm more inclined to be thinking bullish at this point on Aussie than bearish. Uh, a couple very clear reasons for that. So one is that you've got this really bought, overbought RSI after FOMC and the pull the pullback so far you can see where it's holding 40. Very short term of course, 
you'd like to see the market resolve uh, resolve itself with three waves down. And in this case, this would be wave A, uh, looking higher in wave B, and then lower in wave C. So it's early, um, but as far as the you know the maturity of if this is going to be a three wave down. But I put an entry at 7705 last night. It wasn't triggered yet. I'll leave it because it could still be triggered. 7707 would be the 618. The high volume level from FOMC is 7692. So it's a good window of resistance, 7692 to 7707 in Aussie. Um, and if we do a fib from the low down here, if we get up to 7707, you would have two equal legs, 7595, 7589, 618 could be, uh, end up being the level that you want to actually buy it at. By the way, I had the Remember the target on the 7705 short was 7620 or 7635. We actually already basically hit that. We came into 7637, which was support. So if you're triggered on a short up here at 7705, I would actually be getting more aggressive. I'd look down towards 7595, 76 area. Again, the 618's down there. Um, and that could be really the spot to, you know, to get long. So that's my thinking on, on Aussie. So two levels for the foreseeable future, um, 77.05 and 75.89.95. Okay. And then, of course, you always want to have a nice... Uh, a nice view of the broad the broad picture and if we can break out it this is up sideways up you know, the next big resistance level would be probably up towards the top of this channel, um, which puts you, you know, not even, it puts you above 80. So, you know, that's why when I, when I write about Aussie, I'm like, yeah, I can pull back and I'm willing to short it, but you know, the big risk, like the big move is still going to be, or is still the breakout risk. Um, and we should take a look at the, yeah, so you can see we're consolidating around the median line of what would be the median line of this channel, right? Of this channel. You know, it'd be a gift if we did collapse here and got back down into 74. Uh, 50, which is what we were kind of hoping for when, you know, we were coming in in early March, but was not to be. But yeah, this is one of the great potential, uh, tr you know, trends in waiting is the is the Aussie move. And this is something I had mentioned in the uh, note the other night. It's been 1,464 trading days since the Australian dollar made a 240-day closing high. These are closing highs. 240 days is one year, essentially, right? 20, roughly 20 days in a month times 12, 240. Okay. It's just looking at it a little more granular than, say, 52 weeks. Because remember, 52 weeks... If you're going on a weekly basis, you kind of have to wait until Friday, which truth be told is probably, you know, it probably actually cut down a lot of trading mistakes if you do that. But 
we've got the 52 week closing high is 7719 um, so you could argue that a daily close above it would be a breakout but like we've gotten that a lot and you would have gotten murdered every time so might as well wait for a weekly so the daily the true daily breakout really is 7812 okay on the daily break so there's more of a there's a higher level on the daily breakout than on the weekly breakout which is okay. But so I was just, you know, I was looking back in history. How many have we had anything close to a consolidation like this? The answer is no. I mean, not even close. Like, for example, before the move higher that began, you know, in 2002, really, with that breakout, which was the last major dollar cycle low, <coughs> excuse me, you had 765 days. So, like, half the time. Between, you know, the 240-day – sorry, I had to mute it. I had to mute it to cough. Um, so, you know, half the day to the time between the uh, closing highs, 240-day closing highs. I mean, the, the other uh, – you had one, what was this, 800? 850, and that one you actually went to a high pullback and then continued higher. That would have been back in 1994. It's just, you know, what we've seen is we've never seen anything like this, you know, where the market's been suppressed this long. You know, how long this, the, how long this general, not just the Aussie decline, but how long the dollar has rallied, um, you know, how steady it's been. We've just never seen anything like it. So the reversal should be really quite something quite spectacular, which is why I really want to err, if you will, on the side of, um, you know, of, of breakout risk on the long side, if that makes sense, right? So, you know, yeah, down to pick up 100 pips if, if we can on the short side. But I think that, you know, the next move might be 1,000 pips higher, and it might not even take that long. Go back to 60 days, three months here. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay, let's move on. I've spent enough time rambling about that. Uh, so Kiwi today, we've got RB and Z later. Look, RB and Z. Um, Kiwi looks like it, you know, it tanks, looks like it wants to go to 67.50. I'm like, all right, I get lathered up, ready to buy it. I'm like, it's going to come into 67.50. I'm going to catch a low, and then it stops, and then I sell it, and then I get stopped out. Um what about RB and Z? Well, at this point, you've got five waves up. So my – and we're into resistance. This was the circle from the other day. You can probably get rid of it. Um, 70.94 is a square root level. doesn't really do anything for me um, because the market didn't do anything there before. It looks like 71.30, and I think Mike's talked about this. It looks like 7130. If you're going to get, you know, I don't know what RB and Z is going to do. Okay, um, I don't. You know, the, typically on these on these announcements though, you do get a sharp. You'll get if you get a, a move to fade, and the times when you don't is when there's like a big policy change or there's a big change, and I don't think that's really in the cards today. So. You know, if you trade up through here, you'd go through the trend line, but, you know, 70, you're still in the middle of the range. So 7130, former lows, just an area I'd pay attention to. Um, let's see if we can find anything else, anything good on the, you know, from like a median line type, type of perspective. So here's Kiwi, right? <clears throat> So this has been the operable channel. This has really been the channel. And you're at the median line part of it now, which hasn't really done a whole lot, right? I mean, you could say, I guess it was on this low here after Thanksgiving. Um, You know, sometimes it's just okay to say, I really don't know, and rather than try to force some sort of opinion on the market. I, 
I, I lean, I lean towards even allowing for, you know, a, uh, allowing for a spike, you know, maybe allowing for a spike on the move on RB and Z. I lean towards kind of wanting to be a seller on this. Again, I don't really know if it's here is the, is the place to sell it because you're kind of leaving yourself out to dry with a, a run into 7130, which has been pretty, uh, pretty clean all year. So that's all I would offer is 7130. Watch it on RB and Z. I don't want to, again, I don't want to force an opinion on the market. I don't have one. Like sometimes, um, the time for opinion is like when you have a bunch of stuff lining up, like dollar yen right now is lining up for a low, which we've essentially came into it. But this is a chart from last night. But 11070, yeah, I'd love to buy that. That you know, that's a time to to make a to take a stand. Um, Kiwi right now, eh, kind of all over with it. But yeah, watch 7130. So I'll leave it there with Kiwi. Dollar CAD is interesting. Uh, this is the chart from, again, last night. You have five down. We did get a rally. Um, this could be a, just, uh, this is basically the opposite of Aussie at this point. You could get A, B, and you can get another poke higher and C. It might not even hold this trend line. Um, 133 is probably a level. And at a 33.19 would be actually your, so 33.19 is your 618, which is nice because you see the four hour reversal bar, right? That's 33.22. So 33.22 could be your B wave before you get a bounce higher. And if, for argument's sake, if we did go to 133.22, you would have two equal legs at 34.68, actually a little higher than I wanted, uh, but even so, something to consider. Again, you've got the yearly opening price at 34, excuse me, 42. I've been uh, torn with dollar CAD recently because... Right here's our weekly chart, and you know we going way back. If there's a major um, decline about to be underway in dollar CAD, I'd really like for it to go up through the highs from December. Remember we have the uh, the analog, the inverse of this, which I'll bring up. Because this is one of my favorite ones. So the question is, do we get up there at some point? You know, I wouldn't worry about it now. I would worry about the next um, – I would worry about trading the next bar essentially because you do have the five down. So you do have uh, some good stuff to work with. But this is still the analog going on, so maybe there is another spike in the cards by, at some point in April, right? Essentially trading range at this point, though. I'll have more to say on that in the in the in the post later, uh, but all I would would add here is that you know thirty three twenty. It's actually an okay level for a long, just like Aussie is a good level for a short at 7705. Um, and yeah, 3430 to 3450, you know, good good place for, for for shorts, if not just getting out of longs and maybe go short up there. Okay. Could be hold in a range holding period in the uh, dollar cat exchange rate for a little bit. Um, what about related markets? So I'll, I'll do this now and then I'll, and then I'll look at some of the crosses. Um, but we had questions from Sarab, I'm sure others want to know too, some opinions, uh, on copper and oil and silver. So copper, 
is a good one to look at. It's been really clean as far as the long-term picture, right? Everyone knows this picture. Um, you know that copper could be major, major, major bull, right? Here's our great setup with the channel and everything and go through it, support, support, support. Um, but we still need to get into support, right? Hoping for us to get into support. If we can get down into support, again, that near 251 or something, that is the trigger. That needs to be what happens to unleash the Australian dollar and a so-called next leg of a, at least this part of the reflation trade. Okay, that's what needs to happen. So I still, you know, have really copper as a major level uh, at 251 or so. Again, much like Aussie early in the month, and I was hoping we get 74.50 in Aussie. Copper, I was hoping we would get 250, uh, 60 or so on FOMC, but of course, market has to be difficult, and um, you know, has to kind of take the scenic route to get to where it's going, as seems to be the case over the last couple of years, and it didn't get to where we were looking. But that's the level. That's still the level. Right, I can't be any more clear than this. I am a buyer on this blue line. And that blue line is still a little bit lower, right? You know, so we're at 262.30 right now. So if we go 262.30, 2.6230 minus 2.5, let's say 250, let's say it's just 251, okay? We'll get that divided by 2.6230. So it's 4.3% lower. Um, which sounds like a lot, but that can be reached pretty quickly. I mean, you fell, you know, just the decline from the last two days is 2.6985. Where did we finish yesterday? Close Yeah, so the, even the uh, the last two days decline was two and a half percent from up, you know, up here to down here yesterday's close, you know, so it's it can get there in a couple of days if you get a, a couple of days of really sharp risk off, um, you know, which would hit the base metals like copper. All right, let's look at silver, which kind of is a mix of base metals and precious metals. So after the smoke job on silver, we've turned up sharply. Um, just looking at this line as support and this line as resistance, what we say 1777 is the 618, right? So that would be where you're going to look at resistance still. Same same spot as, as uh, a couple days ago when I tweeted this chart out. Pooja says copper is too if it means Aussie is 17. Well, maybe, but not necessarily, right? I mean, then you bring up a great point. You say copper, you know, at 251 means Aussie at 70. Look, I, uh, that'd be great, you know, if something like that were to happen. But first of all, I don't know if copper is going there or not. I think it is. But don't forget, the two can diverge. They don't have to follow each other perfectly. Like, you know, if you knew that last year, if you had for some reason had, uh, you know, the the book from Back to the Future, Marty McFly, and he had – you had the uh, book that Biff stole, which showed all the horse race winners, but it happened to have the price of copper in it. And if you knew last November, October, that uh, – <laughs> Pete, Pete likes that one. You're like, it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. And you knew that copper was going to go to two – you know, 210 to, you know, 270, basically you have one of the strongest rallies in copper ever. You'd probably mortgage your house and, you know, let's say, but let's say that you couldn't trade copper. Let's say that you had to trade, you can only trade FX for whatever reason. I don't know. You'd probably go out, borrow money and go long Aussie dollar up the wazoo because you're like, well, copper is going to see one of the biggest rallies ever. 
in a two week period. So like, I'm going to go long Aussie and I'm going to be rich. Well, you'd be in the poor house because Aussie actually ended up tanking, right? And here you go. You would have been long Aussie. Let's say you went a long Aussie here. It might have started off the first couple of days. And then Aussie went like this. And copper went like this. So while I am totally puja with your logic, 100%, um, you know, because I would think the same thing, right? That, you know, if base metals get hit, you know, Aussie probably gets hit too, um, to, you know, decent, you know, decent size, but it's, it doesn't have to be the case, right? So we got to keep just our eyes on the specific chart that we're trading with. And with Aussie, again, with Aussie, I think that your, um, your levels are really solid, 77.05. But then if it comes into 7590, and especially if it happens to be on a trend line or something at that time, especially if you get up 7705, go lower, get two equal leg, you know, then you got to be looking on the uh, on the top side, regardless of copper. But especially if copper's at support. So whatever. All right, leave it there. Okay, where was I? I was on silver. Oh, and I got to look at the S&P too, don't I? After what's happened, nice uh, some some volatility. Okay, so copper, sorry, silver, seventeen seventy seven six one eight, and you have the slope line there again. These slope lines, this is just a fork, and I've got like every subdivision on it, right? You've got the median line as well as all the um, you know twenty five percent, seventy five percent, and fifty percent lines. So they kind of all seem to be working at some time or another. So the, this one, which was resistance at the top I wouldn't really call this support I mean you went right through it so I'm not going to do that but uh, I would watch for the support this line again with the blue circles on it I would watch for that for watch that for support again at some point in the future because if we get up into 1777 and pull back this might be the place to get bullish on uh, on silver again okay and it's a little higher than 17 because when I wrote this chart out the other day, it was a 17. I think it was Friday or something or maybe, I don't know, Monday. So, someone asked me a uh, question of where do you see support, resistance, and silver. And I said 1777, resistance, 17 support. This is more like 17, we'll say 1708, right? And that's, that's going to change at some point, but whatever. So... Those are the levels for silver, uh, 1777, 1708. Okay, let me look at the S&P real quickly. So the S&P, this chart here, right? You know this one. Um, we actually have, so the level on the downside, the trend line is the big level for me. And that's, um, you know, if we would have gotten there earlier today, it would have been closer to 2320. If we tank at the very end of the day for some reason, it would be 2325. But check this out. You actually have, for the first time in a, in a long time, you have a slope that would be bearish to follow. And it's a real fork, not a trendline fork. And there you go. So <clears throat> um, we actually rallied into the median line this morning, right? That's the cover into 2350. Do you see how the this would be the 25 line? This would be the 75 line. The 25 and 75 lines are just beautiful. Look at the look what that did. Look what that look what that did. Then it went. Good night. Okay, look what that did. This has been support so far. The 75 line. A lot of times, as you know, a lot of times when that happens, the 75 line when it's support, a lot of times you get resistance on the 25 line when you have support on the 75 line. So within a downtrend, these are your two levels that you want to um you want to play if you will right uh the two levels being the two lines so this is the support line um you know multiple ways to trade it obviously uh you know cowboys will trade it 
you know, be try to buy the dip down here. If I'm buying a dip, I prefer it to be, you know, something like where you're on a support line. So if for some reason we edge sideways down, maybe you get support there at some point. But the, you know, the real good way to trade it would be to watch for resistance on this. So you have horizontal levels that intersect it. You know, if we get up there over the next couple of days, you know, you're talking 2360, 2357 would be um, in two days. You know, the end of the week, you're talking 20, you know, a little lower. So either way, just follow this fork for the S&P. Okay. Okay. How about crude oil? Because we had a question there. Really quite uh, similar, if not the exact same thing that we've been looking at. So here's the log chart, right? The log chart has been broken on crude oil. Here's the arithmetic chart. You still haven't broken it. You did get a bad reaction after the inventory build today, which is typically, um, it's actually a normal reaction. And then it, it, we have turned up. So I'm still looking for a low on crude oil. And one of the big reasons for that is of course, the COT chart from last week. And remember, we had um, the, you know, just like we have this record positioning right now for the British pound, we had a rec, oh crap, I hate when I do this. When on TradeStation, when you type in the futures route, you need to type in at CL. I typed in CL and it gave me Colgate Palm Olive stock which of course when you do that it gets rid of all your indicators okay All right, so with um, so we, yeah, we so we had you know at recently we had this crazy buildup as you know in the long specs for oil and the short hedgers, and we still have a pretty big position, but it's been cut down significantly, and basically the entire cut down was last week, so. This is showing you the change in one week positioning, okay? And um, you can see a lot of times when you get a very extreme change, and extreme is all relative, I guess, but in this case, it's certainly absolute because you've got a record change for one week. And um, I've remarked that since the bottom in oil last year, We've had so many extreme changes. It's just, it's crazy. I mean, you had the, at the time, a record trade on specul speculators buying it in May of 2016. That was three weeks before a top. So they essentially bought the top. Okay. Um, they sold like mad back in uh, September of 2016, which was two weeks before it ripped higher. They sold like mad in November of 2016, like right before the election, when crude oil ripped higher. They bought like mad the week before the top, which was in December. And last week, they sold even more than they did back in November. You know, so I'm looking for crude to bottom out down here. Um you know if for no other reason than the fact that every you know they've they've sold a, a ton of crude again so they're selling crude just like they were back here in november and um and back here in 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 september and each time you know it's, it took a couple weeks well not this one the one in november only took one week right if you look at it on a weekly closing basis, it's essentially you're getting the exact low. So that's where we are with that. Uh, and the crude, the crude trend line. 
So 46.80. Obviously, we trade on price, right? You can't, you don't trade the COT numbers. So for risk management purposes, for buying crude oil or whatever, I wouldn't want to see crude trade under 46. You know, I wouldn't want to see it below 46.76. Uh, certainly, certainly on a close, and even intraday, I wouldn't want to see it down there for that long. All right. So that's my story with crude oil. Now there are, it's, uh, it is, uh, it's been an hour, but I'm, I got a few things else that I want to look at. So if we look at, there's a few crosses that are interesting, notably the Euro ones. So Euro CAD actually is an interesting cross up here. Okay. A few things you have a 200 week average which seems like a strange thing to say, but you've actually got two, you've also got a slope line. So this is the, tre the trend line from 2012 and 2015. All right, you can see that that same slope off here, you can see all the lows support that it was and even resistance back here in December, we're right back at that level. So this goes hand in hand with crude oil finding itself some sort of a, a bottom and uh, dollar cad absolutely going down in the dumps, right? Tanking. Big level here. If I look at the daily chart, you can see that we're putting a little reversal bar today, which is quite interesting. You have five waves up. The levels do leave a little bit to be desired from the standpoint that here, by the way, is another 2575 example. 75 lows, looking for a high on the 25 line. Okay, and again, the underside, that's the same line. That's the one from back that I showed you on the weekly chart. Okay, essentially right up into there. Thing is, you've got a square root level at 4540. And if I draw from the election, which was right here, if I draw that down, I've got a 50% retracement of it at 45.30. So what's the high today? 44.93. So 45.30, 45.40, EuroCAD looks like something that could be very interesting for a short. Now, here's the thing, like, you know, if, if you're if you've got a bigger, a much bigger time horizon, it might actually be worth trying to short some here. And if you don't if it doesn't bother you, if a market goes against you 100 pips, um, then you can try to, you know, add to it or something. Me personally, not my style. Right. I'd rather see it come into the level. I'll pick it and I don't mind waiting uh, at all. If I go to the four hour chart. It looks like to me that this does need to go a little higher, right? You have a clean five waves up, one, two, three, four. This is five, but five itself doesn't look done to me. In other words, yeah, sure, nice reversal, but to me, this is going to be a fake out. You've got one, two, right? Looks like you still need a little more three and four, or a little more four and five wave action to get EuroCAD into a top. So EuroCAD into a top, 45, 30, 40. 4540 would be your level, okay? If I draw an Elliott channel, it's pretty nice. Connect the tops of waves one and three, wave four, or wave, sorry, wave two low, and it cuts through there like a hot knife through butter. So that's another way to play it. If you get below here, which is the 2-4 line on Elliott, then you would have a short position to put on. So either wait for the level, be picky, or wait for it to break uh, the level, and then you can put a short on. The other one, of course, is Euro Aussie, which really, like we were long last week, had a great entry thing ripped higher we literally bought it like right here 
ripped higher, had a 40-65 target. It goes to 40-55 and then tanks and then goes higher anyway, which is, you know, would have hit the target. So uh, Euro Aussie, this is the four hour chart. Daily chart, of course, as you know, I've talked about it ad nauseum. But we have, um, we have, oh, we got to look at this a linear scale. We have the median line, which we continue to trade on. Okay, we have this median line that we continue to respect, if you will. So we did get, um, okay, so we have the, um, sorry about that. We have the median line. Okay, which has been huge every time it gets touched. Of course, we got below it. Then yesterday we went nuts to the upside. So what I would do here is watch this. I would watch this line here, okay? I'd still watch for support. Because this actually looks like it could be quite bullish. Um, You know, you have five up, three down on your Aussie. You know, and if we say we get triggered on a short on Aussie dollar at 7705, essentially at that point you are, you're actually long uh, Euro Aussie because we're long Euro. Right, so, you know, you have, this would be your 25 line. This would be your, a line to pay attention to because it cuts through these levels here. Um, average wise, let's see. What's dollar yen doing? Maybe uh, this next this next drop might try to might try to trigger it. Okay, so Euro Aussie. Okay, so we are riding the the twenty day average as well is acting as support, which is a positive. Yeah, so Euro Aussie could be good on the upside for um, for a bit. So yeah, maybe forty twenty is a level. Twenty day average in Euro Aussie for some reason. Um, I always find it, or I've always found it to be a useful average, like during the trends especially remember the trend trend down in 2015 every rally was 20 day average trend down this year february 20 day average uptrend 20 day average so you know with that you could be looking at maybe 40 um Looking at maybe 40, 20 or so, you know, the next couple of days, 40, 20. And really, you could be looking to take it up into at least 4290. That's the high, but the upside of the channel would be even higher than that. You know, the last leg down, let's see where the retracements are. Actually, the retracement, 61.8 is 43. You know, so this is a good spot. So, yeah, some of these Euro crosses, very interesting. Um, you know, Euro CAD maybe topping in 45.30, 45.40. Euro Aussie looks like it could rally for a little bit. But, you know, get your levels, right? All right. So I am going to uh, leave it there today, unless there's any other questions. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.
Going once, going, oh, Puja, Euro Yen. All right. Yeah, so Euro Yen. <clears throat> so with Euro Yen, you know why I, yesterday, last night, when we were looking at this during the, um, Hold on. Let me close down some of these workspaces just because I've got like every workspace open. Let's see what the system. This is a short term. This, this is a short term 10 minute system, by the way, that will be. Uh, I'll be doing a webinar on, and we'll start sending the alerts out on next uh, next week. Uh, I'll do the webinar next Monday. We'll put the schedule out. But actually, just bought Euro today at 11 a.m. It bought it at 108. So there you go. Uh, going back to this. Okay, so Euro Yen. What we've got. Pete, you're welcome, my friend. You're welcome. You're welcome. What we've got with Euro Yen, you know, the broad, I think, uh, I, I think that the broad downtrend's done. Okay. You do have problems a little higher. But, you know, promising on the responses at these levels to me this just looks something like you know maybe a one two three four five maybe get a five so we're in four now which could be drawn out for a while um obviously we did have a decent short off of this um we have come in more than i thought we would um but when you look at the route so i think for me the tell on this is the fact that the rally from here from down at you know 118 or so which was a great level what's that one at 118.23 the tell for me is the fact that the rally of, from that level really counts best as a three right so you got one two three four five that's a right b and then five up c so if that's a three-wave rally then you know the two options really are because this obviously is not an impulse lower it could be a motive but it's not an impulse but i would stick with the idea that because it's coming after this huge move up that the most likely scenario or i shouldn't say the most likely but a likely scenario is that you're in a triangle okay and as we know triangles like to alternate between uh, their alternating legs like to go between, you know, six or like to relate by 618. And funny enough, 618 is 119.27, which guess where the monthly open is? It's 119.23. Guess what that low is? It's 119.32. So you have a boatload of stuff basically in the 119.20s for a... Um, for a low okay so if all were to play out i would be saying you know you got a b right c and d and e something like this okay so if that were to play out you could get wave you could get a big move up in d right maybe move in e so we might be in a range for a bit here that would be my, I guess, if you will, my my best guess on uh, on uh, on Euro Yen. A B, looking for C. I love how the levels line up. Um, at one nineteen twenty three, right? Six one eight one nineteen twenty six. That low from two eight is one nineteen thirty two.
you know, and you got to remember like where, where we're coming from, because if this is going to be a flat or something really bearish, then you, you know, taking this out, you got to, you know, I mean, don't, don't mess with it. Right. But look what happened after the run up. We came back and we retested the, the high essentially we retested the breakout level. Okay. And got a big move higher. Okay. We've come off the year open. Beautiful. Um, but you know, there, this, the fact that this shouldn't be lost on us, that we did hold a big level, right? You held the high, the former high, former resistance becoming support. I'm more inclined as we get down into that area to, you know, lean towards the bullish side rather than just say it's going to fall, you know, everything's going to hell, right? Um, so Pooja, does that, does that kind of help uh, as far as the thinking is concerned? Yes. Thanks. Okay, great. Yeah. And again, the, you know, you're always looking for your tells, your tells in the marketplace, right? Like right now, I think that copper is a tell. Like I look for copper to get down into that big, beautiful, you know, blue line. And that would be a great, a great thing. Um, at the same, at the same time, um, I think the tell on this pattern is the fact that this is a three. So it, it, you know, suggests or tells me that we probably need to consolidate for a bit because threes happen in triangles and triangles happen after big moves. And this is a big move. All right. OK, so now I'm going to wrap it up. Um, good webinar today. Thank you for attending. And, um, you know, great levels that we're coming into here. Really pay attention to this uh, dollar yen. Um, you know, here, you know, not a lot of room for air, how I like it. 11070 should be the spot. Looking forward to turn up. Uh, and, you know, Aussie, good level, 7705. RBNZ coming up here later today. Uh, not really sure what to think, but I would pay attention to 7130 if we spiked into it. So I'll leave it there. All right, everyone have a great rest of your week. Bye.